And the trial for New Jersey man Christopher Greger is slated to begin tomorrow. The defendant stands accused in the 2021 death of his six-year-old son, Corey Michelow. The child's father brought him to the hospital after he appeared lethargic after a nap, slurring his words and stumbling. At the hospital, Michelow suffered seizures during a CT scan and died soon after. The young victim's death was deemed a homicide after his autopsy revealed blunt force trauma. This was not the first time Gregor was arrested for mistreatment of his son. He was also arrested a month before his son's death on child endangerment. This came after surveillance footage surfaced of the defendant forcing Michelow to run on a treadmill at increasing speeds, despite his son repeatedly falling. Michelow's mother, Brianna, filed a wrongful death lawsuit against New Jersey's Department of Child Protection and Permanency for failing to investigate the dozens of abuse reports she allegedly filed against the defendant. She even filed an order for emergency custody days before her son's death. Civil trial attorney Dante Mills and trial attorney Alexis Rosenberg are here with me to discuss this and break it down. Dante, I'm going to start with you. There seems to be a lot of talk about directly linking Gregor to the death of his son. But what direct evidence do you think they're going to use to show that? They're going to have a tough road here getting that direct evidence to say that he caused the death. Because you have an instance where he was making him run on a treadmill and he kept falling. Um, and if the father says that happened again here and he must have hit his chest uh, and it caused some kind of compressions and then once he went and he had that internal damage, it wasn't from me abusing my son. It was from me pushing my son because he wanted to, to be to work out and, and wanted to get stronger. And this was me encouraging him to do that. So this is a case where it may come down to um, are we allowed to push our children and how far, or how far can we push them? Not, not necessarily uh, abuse in a technical sense where you see someone actually physically hitting, but where you see someone pushing their child further maybe than they can go if this is the same situation, like the treadmill situation that happened um, and the child's body just not holding up to that. Now can this, the parent be responsible for putting a child in that situation? Actually, that's a good point. We'll see if the defense goes in that direction. Alexis, one of the things that I'm wondering is, are they going to put the victim's mother on the stand to push the state's case forward? I think that that would be something that they would do, particularly since she has allegedly filed all of these reports against her husband. I agree with you, Terry. I think they're 100% going to put the mother of the child on the stand. She had filed a bunch of reports. She can testify as to what she witnessed, the basis for those reports. And I disagree with Dante a little here. I don't think this is going to be as hard to make that connection with the mother's testimony, with the reports she made, as well as with the medical examiner testifying to the injuries and that the child was with him around the time frame. So I don't think, I think that, that it's going to be as hard as um, stated. I do believe also we still have the treadmill incident, which there's a video, which we do know that juries do like that type of evidence. Yeah, there's nothing like a video. It's always something that you want to show a jury if, in fact, you have a video. One of the other things is, what's the defense going to say? I know that there's some disagreement as to what they can say, Dante, but beyond having sort of a theory that you're pushing your child along, how is he going to defend himself against all of these reports that the mother has alleged? Here's how I would do it. I would say that um, these reports came in. This was a situation where the mother and father did not get along, right? They had these things going back and forth against each other. I would say the reports were made because she didn't like him. And the, import the reports were investigated, and it turned out that he was allowed to re re retain a uh, split custody of his son. That if something was going on, it would have been picked up by the people whose job it is to investigate that. So I'm using the reports to show they were out there, they had their eye on them, and nothing seemed to be off. So I'm using the, the, the fact that it was reported, but nothing, no consequences were given to show that he wasn't an abusive father. Exactly. And Alexis, we talked a little bit about this offline, but there is a civil suit that the mother's bringing. What are your thoughts about that? 
I think that she has a strong civil suit. I mean, I, we have to keep in mind that the standard is lower than in a criminal suit, first of all. We can all relate back to the OJ civil case. So the standard is lower, but she made these reports and the Department of Children and Family or what they, whatever they call it, New Jersey, followed up. They did not protect the child. The child, we had one endangerment charge and then ultimately the child died. So there is a very good argument that they didn't properly perform the duties of their job. Right, I agree. I think it's a very good argument. And oftentimes we see this happening and it's tragic where you have the children's services, they have all of these complaints that are made and they're either moving too slowly or they're not moving at all. And then we have a result like this. We'll see if that's what's going to happen with the civil case and we'll learn more about that. Listen, thank you both so much for weighing in on these cases and make sure to check out Law and Crime's YouTube channel for gavel to gavel coverage once the trial begins.